Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own private Rust server. It's something that's really easy to do, and once you have it set up, you can practice your building, your crossbreeding, or even record cinematics for your YouTube videos. So the first thing you do is click on the link down in the description, and you can download the file. Then, once you have that, just create a new folder and drag and drop that file into there and extract it in that folder. Then open up this new folder and inside you're going to see a bunch of things. The first thing you want to do is right click on the run command and click edit. Here you can change a bunch of the things such as the host name and the server name. This isn't important but if you want to you can change the names. You can also change the server seed by changing that number that follows server.seed and if you want to change the world size all you have to do is type in plus server.world size and then type in the world size that you want. And if you go to Rust.io, you can type in your server name and find out the exact seed that the server is using for its current wipe. So for example, Oz Space Plunge 1. If you double click on that, it'll give you the server seed. And then in the top right corner under procedural map, you can see what the world size is and what the seed is. Then all you have to do is copy and paste those numbers into your folder if you want to copy this server, for example. Then all you have to do is double click on the run to run the server and this will start up your server. Do note that on your first time of running a server, it will take a while, usually around 10 to 20 minutes, depending on your internet speed and your computer speed. So just leave this in the background while you go do something else. After that time has passed, this is what your program should look like. Now that you've set this up, you want to give yourself admin commands. So what you want to do is type in owner ID and then enter your Steam64 number. To get this number, you can just go to your profile, right click and copy the page URL, and then go to a Google page and just type that in. As you can see, the link will include your Steam64 number, which is up there. Then just type that in and click enter, and you are now the owner of your own server. Now you can open up Rust, click F1 and type client.connect space localhost colon 28015. I'll put this in the description. Click enter and you should load into your new server. And if we take a look at the map, we can see that it's exactly the same as Oz Space Punch 1 because that's where we got the seed from. A useful command is global.god, click enter and this will set you to god mode, meaning you can't die. Another one is noclip, when you type in noclip into console, you can now fly around like this. And if you cancel noclip by typing it in again, you won't take full damage because you're in god mode. You can bind noclip to something, for example, I bind noclip to V, so I can click V to easily fly around. If you want to practice your crossbreeding, you can open up the server file here and type in server.plantick space 1. This means that the plants will tick every one second, and you can type in server.plantick scale 60, and this means that the plants will grow 60 times faster. You can change the 60 number to whatever you want, depending on how fast you want your plants to grow. And as you can see here, if I give myself a seed and plant it, you can see that the seed is rapidly growing at 60 times faster than normal. Every second, it's ticking 60 seconds forward. But obviously, because the ground is zero, it's not going to grow. And if you want to practice anything, you can just click F1, click on items, and then you can give yourself whatever you want. This includes building materials and different things that you can mark around with to create your own designs and pretty much set up your own build server. You can also use this to practice crossbreeding. The final thing that I said you could do is practice some cinematics. So if you want to record a cinematic, all you have to do is click console and type record space and then come up with a name. For example, I'm going to do YouTube test. This means that I'm recording a new demo to the name YouTube test. Act out the scene that you want to record, for example, me hitting a node. Then once you're done recording, just click F1 and type stop. Then type in client.disconnect to get yourself out of the server and then on the Rust main page, if you look to the right, you can see the little movie icon in the right side of your screen. Left click on that and all of your demos will be available. So we want to go on YouTube test to see what we had. Click on that and load into the demo. The first thing you want to do is type in debug.debug camera and click enter. This lets you move around freely so you're not bound to your character. The next thing you want to do is type in demo.timescale and default this is set to 1, but if you set it to say 0.1, then things will move 10 times slower. Then some other helpful commands to make your camera movement look a lot smoother is changing the cam speed to 0.1, changing the cam lerp to 0.1, and changing the cam look speed to 0.2. You can change these variables to whatever you want. These are just the ones that I like to use. And as you can see now, my camera movement is a lot more smooth, and this will help you with your cinematic shots. You can also bind keys to change the demo timescale, which helps when you're trying to film. 
So for example, I have seven bound to demo.timescale 0.1 and then I have eight bound to demo.timescale 1. This means that I can switch between full speed and one tenth of the speed by just clicking seven and eight. Furthermore, I bind nine to demo.skip minus three and I bind zero to demo.skip three. This means that nine goes backwards three seconds and zero would go forward three seconds. However, you can obviously change these variables to whatever you want. Then when you're done, make sure to save your server settings by typing in write CFG and then closing the program. This means that you'll stay as the owner and the server settings will be the same. The main reason I made this video is because people keep asking me how to practice their crossbreeding and this is the easiest way. Thanks so much for watching my quick tutorial, I will see you in the next one.